Hello, my name is Matt, and you're watching Code Tech and Tutorials, my YouTube channel about code, tech, and uh, tutorials. Yeah. We're going to look at shared pointers today and some examples of how to use them. So we're going to be going over just the core concepts of them and a, uh, what, the thousand or ten thousand foot view of how they should typically be used and what they're uh, brought in to solve. Because in general, if you're bringing something new into your code, it's to solve some sort of problem. And the problem here that you typically want to solve is shared ownership. But sometimes there can be a case where you have something that comes into scope and a bunch of different things may or may not want to use it. And as long as something is using it, you want it to stay alive and stay in memory. And then when nothing is using it and all the uh, people that were working with it are done with it, it goes out of scope and it deallocates and thus basically manages itself all you have to do is say who's uh, using it at the moment basically so we're gonna look at examples and syntax that involve the shared pointer and how to use it here I have a new project I launched with Visual Studio for C++ and I picked the CMake pattern not that that really matters too much but it gave us some boilerplate code that says hello CMake and we are going to want to include memory because that is where shared pointers are as well. So I like to do examples that involve uh, some kind of thing you would encounter in real life because I feel like those are easier for people to understand. So this often works well with maybe a small sample of the simulation. So let's make a dog that uh, potentially goes to different places. And the and maybe we'll we'll throw a cat in there too. Maybe a dog and a cat. It'll be like it'll be like Ren and Stimpy. All right. So let's make some structs for those objects. So we're gonna make a dog. And uh, what do you want to know about a dog? Maybe it has a hunger level float. And well, that's kind of a weird thing to start out with. Maybe we want a type of a dog, or let's just go with size. And we'll store that as a float as well. All right. So we're just gonna stick with a dog for now. We're going to make the most simple example possible. Let's say we have another struct called a uh, place, which will simulate uh, a place in the world or like a point of interest, we might say. And for here, we want to know about potential dogs. We could even store an array of these. We're going to just store it as a shared pointer. The dogs are going to be in a place called a let's do the kennel let's say we're making a, a kennel setup instead of just one dog the kennel can store a whole bunch of dogs as many as you want so we'll use the vector memory type and now we are also getting into something called data oriented design but we'll save that particular thing for another time all right so shared pointer of dog, a whole vector of them. Dogs have a weight and a hunger level. Maybe we'll also throw in here just age. All right, very good. So uh, now we want to run a simulation and use these shared pointers. Now this is going to work a little better if we have other things that the dog would want to be shared with. So let's try to come up with some. You know what? Let's just make a vet veterinarian because maybe they both belong to the kennel and the veterinarian uh, like maybe a sick one came into the kennel so it's still registered there but they want to send it to the vet for a while then when it's done into the vet it goes back to uh, whoever's left on the list of owners which would be the kennel but we could in theory have a, a people owner too or something in this case like we could have a, a human and then we could have in here you know maybe you'd want to expand it to more pets we can have a vector of shared pointer dog's own or something like that. We could do all kinds of cool C++ to expand this out to be pet's owned and then give them a type, but we're not worrying about that here. Uh, I just, you know, all kinds of things come up in my mind of how, ways to expand it because C++ is fun, isn't it, guys? Okay, so there we got the kennel. You know, and I was just thinking, dogs probably need a name. So let's give each dog a string name. So we're going to have to also include string here. All right, very good. So we, this vet, of course, needs a list of dogs too. And they might store associated data for the dogs, like what's wrong with them, but we're not going to worry about that. We're just saying the dog can have multiple owners. 
and it could be owned by the kennel, the vet, the human. It could be owned by several at once, uh, but it, you know, because it might be owned by a human, but staying in the kennel because the human's on vacation or something, but they'll still keep ownership of it is the point, and you'll see that here shortly. But when the kennel releases it, there's only going to be one owner left. So, all right, let's just show some examples. I want to get into the syntax and show the different ways to use this chair pointer. So first of all, this is all about the pups. Support the doge. So we're going to make a shared pointer of our main doge. And uh, let's just call him Charles. Because Charles is a great dog name. Now this starts out empty. So if we want to uh, initialize him, we have to use make shared. So we'll make shared and then the type you're making, which is going to be a dog in this case. And then it wants all the initialization details. Now there are none because there's no constructor here, but we could assume since it's a struct that it goes in order. So it could take name, weight, hunger, level, age, and let's maybe put them in this order. It'd be better to just make an actual constructor, but we're going to get a, give them the name Charles. We're going to say he's two. His weight, I don't know, let's say he's a 50 pound dog. And then we need a hunger level. I guess we'll just put it at one. We haven't really defined how the hunger works or anything. It's just another variable to play around with. And now another thing I should point out that's probably a little awkward is we already have his name stored, so we probably don't want to go off the variable name too. It's actually uh, going to make it hard to reason about after a while. So we're just going to call this dog one. Like that guy in the Shiloh movie does. All right, so we're going to say, we're going to see out dog one. Uh, and then to get to its data, you do the pointer thing to dereference. So that would that would show the name. And then we also could put an inline here. So we should get just a name into our console if everything's working great so far. All right, well, the problem is it doesn't like this whole thing and us doing this whole thing down here. So we actually need to make a constructor. Either that or we don't want to get into more code. So we're just going to delete it. And now I'm just going to show you how to change its details. You just set it like so. Dog one, and then you have access to all its members. Name. We'll set them equal to Charles. Charles the pup. Or console outing. The data should work. Let's have a look. And there it says Charles. So we know that its base is working. Now, of course, we want to set the other things like age here, weight, hunger level, weight. Uh, I'm gonna change hunger level to just hunger. Of course, these don't wanna be assigned strings. Let's stick to the same. He's about 2.f, that's two and float. Uh, I decided to stick with floats there because we can go like 2.5. I don't know, it might, it's probably actually better as an integer. But then the, you gotta keep track of the birth date to increment and stuff, right? So maybe with the float, we could just increment it a little bit as like half a year passes by. So that's why I was kind of going the float there. But uh, you can do it however you want. There's his weight of 50. Let's say he gained a pound. No particular reason why. 51 pounds dog. And his hunger level is one. So now this should all work. We could, of course, console all this out too. But let's move on to the more... Uh, cool points and cool features of the shared pointer. So first of all, this is of course going to stay in scope and to the end. Now that's not really any different from a normal pointer at this point. We could just call it a dog pointer, not use the make shared. But the whole passing it around is where things get interesting. A kennel, a vet, and a human. Maybe the human should have a name and stuff. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're just things that could own the dog, right? That's all we really care about. Now, what we can do is we can go kennel.pushback or uh, kennel.dogs.pushback to add another dog to their list. But if we add it as a shared pointer, is it essentially assigning another shared pointer of the same type this variable? And when you do an assignment, it uh, keeps the control block the same. Essentially, each shared pointer only has one control block. 
The only thing that gets passed around and duplicated is pointers. And it, it automatically manages that reference count for you. So we're going to see ways to play around with that. But first of all, let's go ahead and uh, just add dog1 to this. And this is going to add, basically via an assignment operator, dog1. So you can pass these by value. Now this isn't a function, but it is essentially going to be uh, pretty similar in that we're passing this by value because this wants it also by the shared pointer value. So now we could say something like channel dot dogs and it needs to know which one. Maybe we'll just say the first one with front name and then we should see that. We should see the exact same dog, Charles and Charles. Now what normally happens when you're not using a shared pointer here and you're just using just data is when you do something like this, it makes a copy of this entire object and it places that copy into, well, in this example, into the vector. And there are two separate pieces of data. Charles still exists out here. And then we got a copy of Charles in here. But in this case, they are still the same piece of data because it's the shared pointer. So uh, if we were to change Charles' details from any of these sources that own him, it would update the control block and basically propagate all its updates across all the owners, which is another nice, really nice feature. Because what if, uh, well, let's take a look at something here. Well, anytime we say name, let's also say the ref count. So we'll put another area in right here where we're going to go, whatever the shared pointer is, use count. There we go. And that is a function. And there we go. So now we can see the use count there. Let's just copy that down here as well. And we should see that increment from one to two. Charles one, Charles two. Yeah, I didn't put any spaces or anything, but as you can see, those are little ref counts. And say the kennel makes some changes. So we take this, let's take the front dog here in this case. Now, normally you would probably have some, some all kinds of kennel special functions to do things. But in this case, we're just going to go change something about him. Maybe we can say he lost a pound. So we'll bring him down to 50. Oh, wait equals 50. So we can change that value. And now it will change in all cases. That's that's the cool thing. So we could go back to this original one because we're changing the one at the kennel now, right? This is an example. So we're going to print out this original one again down here, uh, except this time we're going to go wait. And we should see that we get 50. Now this is just to show that anything can edit it. Yeah, we got 50 rather than the original 51. So that shows that it propagates across all of them. That's how you do it. All right, now let's just throw in some additional ownership. Say, um, maybe there was an original human, human owner. So we'll put the dog there as well. And we just do another pushback. That's all you do to get it in this case. We have dogs owned, slightly different name. Maybe we keep it the same. But now the human's gonna have their own copy as well. And we should see the uh, use count increase from that. Well, it's gonna be human dot dogs, because that's the variable name. Then we need to get the first one on the vector. So front. The reason I'm using these vectors, of course, is, well, you know, just so they can hold multiple, but we're only using the first one. And then you can see now we now have three references and any of them can make changes. It might, it might not make sense in, uh, for any of these to make changes. Like the human probably isn't going to make changes to it while it's at the kennel and stuff like that. But this is a shared ownership case and sharing the ownership of stuff like this doesn't really make much sense. That's kind of personal to the dog. So maybe it would make more sense to design this 
in a way that uh, had something like these were private. But anyone can change it. I don't know. You decide how you want to go and reason about that. Okay, so maybe the poor pup ends up at the vet. So we put him here too. And we can say the same info, except now this is that. Very similar structs, but now it's owned by four different other objects. And we can still do the C out, or uh, do the console out and get the name and the use count. And we should now have four. And as long as something owns it, or something has it, it's fine. Because what if we do something like this? What if we make the kennel go into scope, but then go out of scope? So when kennel goes out of scope, it's going to deallocate all of its stuff. So we should see the first instantiation, use count one, use count two, use count three. It'll go out of scope, and then we should see a new use count three. Because the kennel is going to destruct, and we do see that. So it is properly decrementing when one is no longer used. But the dog's going to exist as long as something is using it. Uh, if nothing's using it, that's the only time it's going to fully destruct. And you don't necessarily need to make it go out of scope to do this. You can also just use the release keyword. Say, uh, maybe, you know, once the dog it initially gets checked in, and then it gets sent somewhere else. So maybe this would be like the check-in, right? Let's just make a theoretical workflow example for like someone that's managing a, a dog going to the kennel and vet and back to its human. So this would be like the check-in because we got to create it. We could in theory create it on the first pushback with like a make shared right here. That would be fine too. But maybe once we're done with the check-in, uh, we want to remove it after we give it somewhere else. So let's let's wait on the human. Yeah, we'll give it. We'll we'll say. Yeah, let's make sure we we tag the owner. So we'll make the owner right away, and then we'll give it to the kennel, and then also maybe it's getting sent to the vet. But down here we say, look, the human has chefs given the the pup up. Don't I wouldn't recommend. But what would you do here is human dogs dot front dot reset, and that would reset the first Doge, essentially setting that pointer back to to null. Uh, you could also do a pop back in this case on this thing, and that should essentially do the same thing because it'll remove it from the vector and deallocate it, which will decrease the reference count. But if you want it to stay on the vector, like maybe they're replacing it with another dog, you still use front, and then you would reset. Oh, it's dot reset, because we're using the shared pointer. And after that, the human no longer has a, has a dog there. But we could give it a new dog, and we do so by, well, we didn't pop the back of that. So there's still data there. It just needs to be something else. Uh, so we could go make shared of a new dog. Oh, this is pretty weird, and I would not recommend doing this this particular way because it's really confusing code, but it works because that's how it's designed. Because at this point, well, the human has a uh, dog with no name no age, no weight, nothing. So we'd probably want to do something like this first. Make another dog. Uh, we'll call him uh, Chet. Eh, maybe maybe he's a slightly older dog. And a much smaller dog. Uh, a measly 22-pound uh, dog. Who's hunger, always hungry. Because it's a chihuahua or something. And at this point, we would go like so. Just to sign it there. And maybe we're done with this instantiation one. Oh, we got to make sure we actually go dog two here. Once we give it to the human, we'll delete it from this allocator. 
So you can use this in type, like a factory type pattern pretty well too, where you make something, you pass it off, and then you get rid of the original one by doing reset. But it won't go out of scope because now the human owns it. It's not going to fully deallocate until we release it here too. So at this point, there's definitely a lot more I could say, but it'd probably be worth going to look at the documentation. And if there's a lot of questions, I will make a part two. So it would be a good idea to go to this web page and have a gander at all the uh, member functions and uh, basically what you can do. Now we only used a few. We used reset. We kind of used the equals with our pushback was essentially an equals in this case. It's not technically right, but it's, it's basically what we were doing. Okay. And there's a lot of other little functions here. You can see, um, you don't necessarily need to use them all. We used make shared. You can see there's even more stuff you can, you can set how it calls the deleter, which is pretty interesting and might be necessary in some cases. But in general, you probably won't have to touch that. Let's see what they do in their example. I feel like I've went through this before. Okay, they use some threads and some base and derive classes. And what are they doing here? They make a shared pointer of the base. Oh, they're just showing you can do inheritance type polymorphism stuff with them too. Where you can make a base type and do a make shared with its derived. So that's kind of cool. Shared ownership between three threads and released. Okay. So I guess that's a pretty interesting use as well. You can share them out to threads. And also I found another pretty decent write up of these uh, over on the Microsoft docs. Here we are. So these are like the main two sources I was looking at. Um, when I learned these and stuff originally. Pretty nice little uh, explanation there. And I'm not sure about their example. What are they doing? They got a they got a media asset with a destructor, virtual destructor, okay. And a song, which is a media asset, it has an artist and a title, and just a little constructor there um, for that. And then they have a photo, which is also a media asset, and this one is a date location subject. And all I need to do is implement the destructor. It looks like, or if they want, this isn't pure virtual. I don't think. No. Okay. Right. I don't know. What is equal default here? I'm used to seeing equal zero for pure virtual. Oh, I'll have to look that up afterwards or someone can leave a comment if you want, but I'll, I'll probably have looked it up by then. All right. And then they, uh, do some examples. Let's look at their example one. They make a song with that as the artist and this is the title. Okay. And they're using auto, so they don't have to do the, the whole write up. We could use auto in all these cases right here because it will figure it out. Just a way to uh, save a little bit. And looks like they make another song and they use the new expression. So basically, I guess they're trying to point out here, you should always use make shared if possible. You can use new as well, but it says, okay, but slightly less efficient. Oh, it just, it doesn't create a named variable for other code access. Okay. So I guess if we're relating that to our example here, we could do that in any of these instead of having this whole check-in thing, we could just go new dog. Uh, and I guess uh, we can't just do new because this doesn't want, oh wait, that should work. I don't know. I'm confusing myself at this point. I think it's possibly messed up because of this down here, but, uh, you probably get the point. 
or maybe we can't do that in a pushback. Maybe we need to use in placeback if we're doing that. I guess we could try it real quick. Okay, let's let's get rid of all this code. And it's no longer going to know what dog one is. So maybe we have to pass it in from the human dogs. All right. Uh, ideally, you'd have some kind of algorithm to find the right dog and not just pass it the front one. But let's just try what happens here when we put new dog. Uh, it doesn't like it. Well, we kind of should be using this here. It doesn't know what dog one is anymore uh, based on this use count. We'll just put human in all of these. Although really I should be using the one from the proper one. But since they're shared data, it'll actually be fine. Unless this human one goes out of scope, then you know that that's bad. Okay, let's just correct it. So we don't run into problems later. Okay, and we're missing yeah, this one here. So it's saying we could go new dog like that. That doesn't seem to work. What are they doing different in their example? Uh, I don't know. They just have an actual constructor, I guess is the main thing. Huh? Yeah, this according to their, oh, no, no, no. What am I thinking? We want this like, like, so not an equals. It doesn't have an assignment for that. So, okay, we can do it that way. So this isn't going to work basically because this doesn't use it as a constructor, but in placeback does use it as a constructor. So that will work here, uh, just like here, because I, I, as I was saying earlier, well, it's not technically correct. Doing the pushback is sort of like doing an equals, uh, that variable equals. So you can't pass a constructor in the equals, just like we saw down here. That's just a C++ thing. And uh, don't quote me on that because that's just how I think of it because that's how it tends to work. I, I don't know if that's 100% correct. Like we can initialize with that and then set it later. So if it's no pointer, you can set it later. If it's reset, if you call that dot reset, you can set it later. And they have more examples. I think this episode's gone on long enough uh, at this point. But just to, we'll, we'll fly through the last few things real quick. So initializing one with SP2, increments ref count, yes. That makes sense at this point. Also increments if you set it equals. So they make another one. And then they make another one and they null pointer it. And then they do a swap. So they take SP1 and swap it with SP2. So SP1 was Beatles. They swap it with the Lady Gaga song. So they should just be switched around. Initializes with another shared pointer, swaps the pointers, as well as the reference counts. So that's pretty handy. It's going to be pretty efficient to do a swap when that makes sense. And it looks like you can use remove copy if to make some little uh, remove algorithm or function if you need to. And it works just fine there on a vector. So we could. That's essentially what we should design in this sort of setup in the long run is stuff like that to help manage it uh, properly and make sure it works as we were kind of talking about. You don't want the vet to pass it off to the wrong person or whatever, you know, or re or be, I don't know. There's, there's some great way to put it, but I, I can't think of it. All right. And that just goes through them all. Example four, what do we got here? Dynamic pointer cast, static pointer cast, const pointer cast, to cast a shared pointer. These functions resemble dynamic static. Okay, so you can basically just do casts with them. Now casts are typically doing the uh, dynamics and static and const casts. I personally try to avoid them if possible, but you never know when you might need to do it to get around some weird uh, thing. So yeah, it looks like you can do it with shared pointers. They just got their own special 
um, functions to do that is the whole point with that one. Uh, example five is just a wall of text. There's no code. All right, I'm not going to read all that, but I think it basically is saying stuff we've already learned for the most part. And example six overloads various comparison operators. Okay, so you can do comparisons. So you make two songs. They're exactly the same, although they're not the same shared pointer, right? Same name, same uh, song, but they're not they're not passing each other. They're both doing a new operation, so they are different, although they have the same names. I think is what the point they're getting here. Then they create another two unrelated shared pointers, uh, song one and song two. And then you can basically check for equality, which they're doing right here. Uh, they're showing what comparison they're doing. They're setting the C out mode to bool alpha, so it'll say true or false instead of zero or one. And then they're doing the comparison, and then they're doing another comparison. So we got a less than operation and an equals operation. Uh, what would that spit out? It says unrelated pointers are never equal. Is this is P1 less than P2? I, I'm not sure what that would come back as. But they're not equal, so it could be true. Uh, but this one should be false, because they are different. This is basically going to compare the memory locations of the control object. So it's not going to care about these names. It's going to care about, hey, is this the same control block? Yes or no. And this comparison here, I'm not 100% sure how the less than is going to work. It's probably going to go off memory address. So if one happens to be at a lower location, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on the less one. But the equals one is pretty consistent. All right, related share pointer instances are always equals. So if they make another one, they give it P2, P2 and P3. This should be true, is why they're different. Uh, variables, they're the same shared pointer instance. All right, hope that all makes sense. Let me know if you have questions down below. Thanks for watching, and a special shout out to the patrons of this channel for making these episodes possible. Peace out, you guys.